has been way too long. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video on cutting bags. There's a couple different ways that you can cut bags and uh, I kind of go back and forth so I just wanted to show you. Okay, so this is a blue oyster bag and uh, I hope that you can hear me okay. There's like someone welding or I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. I need to have the door open um, because this is really stinks. Okay, there we go. Uh, whatever, <laughs> hope you can hear. So this is a blue oyster bag. Number one, before we even get into cutting, you know that you are doing things right when you're uh, let's just stick with blue oyster or golden for that matter um, if they are ready to go into your grow at day 14. Day 14 is what you shoot for. Uh, if it's much longer than day 14, you either need to look at your water, either your substrate is too wet, too dry. Um, you can look at how much spawn you're using. I use a cup per bag. Uh, these are 10 pound bags, by the way. I use a cup per 10 pound bag. You probably don't even need to use that much. That's just what I use, um, but around there. Uh, your substrate itself you know what are you using are you using bran are you using soybean holes um, they should still all be around the same for that matter it's just about uh, how much yield you're getting um, oh last thing would be temperature of incubation shoot for around 75 degrees any colder it's going to take longer any hotter um, it's it's just not good for it for the for the block for the mycelium and it's going to work extra hard so, okay, first thing you want to do um, when you are doing any bag for that matter, you want to take uh, your scalpel and uh, cut a little hole. Um, I cut about, I don't know, an inch, to, uh, probably two inches. I do it as high up um, in the corner as I can. If you do it really low or do it n near the uh, filter patch, you're probably going to have some fruiting out that area. But if you do it kind of far away and tuck the bag, you should be fine. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to squeeze out all the air, okay? And what I do is, actually I will do, I usually do the filter patch in. I've done it both ways, in, out, I don't know. It's whatever your preference is. You get all the bags out, I mean get all the air out. And then I kind of take it and just tuck in the sides. It doesn't have to be all that, that you know, complicated all along. I do this very fast in the grow room, but um, you know, you kind of tuck in the sides, pull down. You could also just pull it down. I know plenty of people that just pull it down. Um, so whatever, whichever way you want to do it. And then you're just going to lay it on your side. Um, now, for this purpose, I'm going to just cut a diagonal, which is like the first way, okay? And you want to do it nice and long. Don't do it just like in here. I do it not necessarily corner to corner, but you know, pretty, pretty far. You know, it's, it's there to there, all right? And you want to make sure, number one, that you're using a sharp scalpel. Um, one of my employees um, had been doing bags and I came uh, behind them looking at them and the, 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 uh, the, um, the cuts weren't all the way through. Like I could see some cut here, nothing, and then cut here. It was because she wasn't using a, uh, a sharp enough scalpel. So, so change your scalpel. If you're doing a lot of bags, even in one sitting, change it maybe once or so. Um, so anyways, and you don't have to like, do it all you know make it all the, like super deep but you also don't have to like do it light so just you know just do a quick um, uh, cut um, so that's one way that's a very popular way of doing things how I've been doing things um, is doing a kind of off-centered X um, so I have my uh, diagonal and then I do um, uh, <laughs> and now I'm like how do I do it um, I do uh, a line here so here to here and I do another line here to here all right again kind of make it longer so again if you can see that it's like an off-centered X so your diagonal a line here or a cut there and a cut right there now I've been doing that because I get a lot bigger of a yield. I've been getting, you know, around three pounds, you know, high twos, um, you know, low threes, all averaging around like a high two, low three a pound on the first flush. I, I personally would do this if you're only able to do a first flush. Uh, if, if you can only do one, you know, for space reasons, you can only do one flush, you gotta get your bang for your buck, you know, that first go around, I recommend you know getting it all getting it all up front like that so I'm getting a lot up front up front meaning the first flush my second flushes are like horrible I mean I, I don't think I get more than a half a pound you know between probably 0.3 to like 0.5 a little over 0.5 
pounds. Um, so in the end of the day, the block is probably still producing the same amount as uh, you know, just doing the diagonal and just kind of letting it go. Um, but I like to do that up front in case I do need to, uh, that extra space and have to get rid of that bag for whatever reason. Um, so that's just how I'm doing it. You know, and I've done it always. Um, so that's the off-centered X, which I'm doing. Again, it gets really good yields. One last thing on this, and this is for any cut. Let's say you've done the cut. This happens all the time. You do the cut, right? And that's where everything's supposed to fruit from. But let's say it starts fruiting from over here instead of over here where it's supposed to, like where you spend all that time cutting the dag on, you know, cut. <laughs> um, what do I do? I don't just let the pin die. You know, I cut the pin out. So I've already done one, two, three cuts. And if something's pinned over here, I'll cut that bad boy out, especially if it's like a good amount, I will cut it out. Otherwise it's just gonna die and there's nothing growing over here. Like, nope, if it wants the fruit over here, I'm gonna cut it out. Now, having said that, if I've got friends, um, you know, in the commercial group um, on Facebook that they've got, you know, thousands of blocks. I mean, they're doing like a thousand, five thousand pounds of mushrooms a week. They don't have time to be going to every block and cutting things out. So, again, this is a learning channel. This is for people that are just starting out or doing this at home, just like hobbyists. So, you know, you can do that. You can take the time to do a little bit. Even me, where I'm at. At the moment, I can take the time, if I see a big hunk of, you know, pinning happening, I can take the time to cut it out. When I'm slammed and it's like dead of winter and that's like my busy season, which is coming up, I might not be able to do that. But that might be something that, you know, I hand off to, to one of my employees or still do. I mean, again, because it's getting me, just by doing that, you're probably getting at least another quarter, um, you know, or a half a pound of mushrooms. Um, okay, so diagonal that. The next way, another way that I used to do this, now you see here, actually this is perfect. If you notice this, um, this here has a little, no, oops, sorry. This here has a little number on it. I have a whiteboard in my um, lab that has like kind of keys to everything. Like, you know, if something went wrong with the batch, basically. Um, that little three means that the, the batch was wound up being too wet. And I forget why, I'd have to look in the board to see what the note. But for whatever reason, this batch came out by accident too wet. You know that your bags are too wet when the everything else is colonized, but the bottom is not colonized. Um, that means that there's too much moisture. The moisture is dripping down. It's basically like, I don't know, uh, like suffocating the mycelium, drowning it. So, um, so I would not do this cut uh, on this particular block. But you could do an X or lateral for that matter, but usually what people do an X and they actually fruit it um, bottom side up. Um, that actually could be a little space saver because you know it's a lot skinnier than you putting it on the um, grow shelf like this. This is taking up a lot more room. So that's an option too, and I did used to do that, um, and I like that. The last kind of cut, now we've been talking about blue oyster, or any kind of oyster for that matter. Um, king oyster, uh, anoki, beach, what else? Uh, Piopino, they all top fruit. And what that means is you let them pin in the bag. So, you know, like right now, we're cutting these with no pins, right? Um, with all of those that I just mentioned, you wait for them to start pinning in the bag. You see it happening. Then you actually cut the bag open and you'll just cut the bag. I cut them like uh, an inch above the substrate. Kings I actually cut an inch below the substrate. But, um, you know, you cut them right around there, scissors, you know, I use scissors, you can use your scalpel or whatever, and they pin, uh, and fruit, sorry, from the top. Um, so they're different than, than most of the other oysters. Um, and then shiitake is like a whole nother thing as well. But uh, I hope this was helpful. I have had some uh, people ask about, you know, what ways to cut and what's the right way. There's no right way, it's just a, a preference. So uh, if you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, Go ahead and do it now, and I will see you next time. I'll try to make sure that it is not too far in the future when I do my next video. Take care. Thank you.